So our next session is a joint effort by Capture in our Partner in Innovation Platform Q Education. Uh, we have two presenters, the first of which is Gil Rogers. Now, if any of you saw the posts on uh, LinkedIn a few weeks ago, Gil was worried about the potential of um, uh, poking at him during his session. Heckling, I think, was the term that he used. So I'm going to do my best not to do that anymore. Uh, but Gil is here. He's the Executive Vice President of Marketing at Platform Q Education. And Ann Freihofer, our very own Senior Enrollment Solutions Consultant, will share stories about our partners in common who are maximizing virtual engagement tools to identify, convert, and enroll more students using Engage and platforms, Platform Q's conduit together. So, Let's find out about how training behavioral intelligence and continuous content has led to increased student enrollment at these institutions. Gil, Anne, hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. I'm super pumped for your session. I me appreciate too. it. And thank, thank you all for having me on your virtual stage. I appreciate it. I will say that I've been in this space for over 10 years. Anne has been in this space for over 10 years, and we have never had the opportunity to present at a conference together. We've had been to more baseball games together than we presented at conferences. Together. So we're, we're gonna, we're, we'll try to catch up, but maybe we'll keep the baseball games ahead by one consistently. So we'll, we'll work on that as we go. I mean, it's um, a lot yeah, easier it, to be together. If it took having our own conference to make it happen, then Boom. here we are. There we go, enroll more catch more foul balls. It's all, it's all the same thing. Uh, so I'll, I'll, we'll do some quick introductions. Um, um, Heather, thank you for not heckling me th throughout the time. My name is Gil Rogers. I'm the executive vice president at Platform Q Education. Uh, we are the developers of the Conduit platform. Uh, I've been at Platform Q for about three years. Uh, prior to here, I've been in the ed tech space for a while. I was uh, at Chegg Enrollment Services, doing their digital marketing, demand gen work, those sorts of things. Uh, been in the, re the recruitment space. Prior to that, I was at University of New Haven and University of Hartford in Connecticut on the enrollment and the marketing side. And so I'm excited to be here today to talk about how we're having these software platforms work together to support our partners better. Uh, so Anne, quick introduction. Yes, Ann Freihofer. Marketing graces me with a senior enrollment regional solutions consultant, very flattering, uh, and a capture, working in sales, helping connect great institutions all over the country with some of the fantastic research work behavioral intelligence, all the things that we do. So uh, I'll be celebrating nine years with Capture in July, uh, which is wild. I can't believe it. It's been nine glorious years. Uh, and Oh, the evolution, uh, how things have changed. And um, I'm really excited, Gil. I think that there's a lot of really cool stuff that we've had the privy of seeing in our partners as they've started to experiment with the way the conduit and engage uh, can bring some of that underneath the radar uh, data, technology, behavior to the surface to truly enroll more students. So uh, I would say in the essence of time, knowing how long-winded you and I can be, let's just <laughs> Actually, we're done. Open for questions. Oh, Great. No. Q&A? Uh, there we go. So, so yeah. So before we hop into anything about, um, you know, about some examples and those sorts of things, I want to level us up a little bit and talk about and think about the world outside of higher education for a moment. Because I think one of the things that we forget to do is consider those things when we're putting together our enrollment plans and marketing plans, right? I think there's a, there's a hook outside of our office where we hang our outside of work life experiences on sometimes when we build some of our, of our of our plans. And I think what's happened over the past year and a half is that hook has started to disappear and we're starting to really understand that students are consumers. And we'll talk about that um, here in a few minutes. So the first thing I'll kind of speak to here is, is really when we think about tools that consumers use when we are shopping, comparing, researching, right? When I'm looking for a house or, or, or a place to rent or whatnot, I might use a tool like Zillow to, to do that because I can shop, compare, evaluate things side by side. Same thing with a tool like TripAdvisor. I can use that to look at destinations, compare things by price. I might use Amazon for, for a lot of my shopping needs. And why is Amazon so great? Because Amazon helps me with recommendations for other things I should get or when I come back, recommendations on things I should buy because of my past behavior, right? Over the past year and a half or so, Another thing that has evolved and we've seen a lot of evolution in is the is media consumption 
by ourselves and the students that we work with in our in our day jobs, right? And so when you know earlier, you know, years ago it was I hate my cable plan because I have a bunch of channels I have that I don't watch that I have to pay for. And so, you know, streaming platforms started to really proliferate because of that, the opportunity for lower cost and choice, right? And access to content. So Netflix came aboard, you know, eight, you know, new platforms like HBO Max and Disney Plus have started to splinter off. And the reason for that is when you think about Disney Plus, does Disney Plus want to license its content to other platforms or does it want to own the experience? And then more importantly, own the data on the engagement with that experience and be able to really tailor content for the audience in real time, right? And so the, and the final piece of this, speaking of tailoring content, is our in the business, particularly in the business world, our ability to scale engagement has evolved. CRM platforms have have completely transformed the way that we are able to develop reporting, analytics, be able to automate communications and reporting. And platforms like Marketo and HubSpot, these these types of platforms allow for tailored marketing and communication. And I know, Anne, one of the things that we've talked about, you know, pretty consistently is the lessons, particularly in some of these areas that can can be applied into the enrollment space and what you've seen over the past nine years or so. So I'd, I'd love to turn it over to you to, to share some of your insights. Sure. Um, in the nine years that I've been reaching out and having these fascinating conversations with institutions, regardless of the style of institution, regardless of the time of year, pre-COVID, post-COVID, doesn't necessarily matter. Four common themes. Uh, we need more content. We need more to measure and make content more personalized. We have fewer resources. We don't have enough time. Uh, so I think an area in which all of us are really created deep roles in this need, uh, these challenges that we face, and all of these needs that we have to be able to be personalized and do it to scale. Um, I worry sometimes, and one of the things that we hear a lot about is more content. We need an increase in more content. We need more of the right content. We need more relevant content. We need more content that meets students and their families and their influencers where they are so that we can truly identify, convert, and enroll more of the right type of student for our institutions. So uh, across the board, regardless of the time of year, regardless of what's going on in the world, I feel like these are four really common themes. So uh, I would encourage all of our institutions that are joining us today to think about when they're increasing content, are they increasing content in a way in which it's valuable? It can be measured, uh, measure those interactions. I mean, imagine a world in which as a consumer, we are not utilizing or the organizations that are communicating what the us, the Zillows, the Amazons of the world are sending us content that doesn't resonate. Uh, we have to think about our students and their families and their influencers in the same way that we experience these things. So, so how do we do more with less? Uh, how do we do it year after year after year? Uh, I think in this next slide, we're going to talk a lot about the evolution of these tactics. And uh, I think regardless of what chair you sit in, we have four common challenges constantly. If there's a challenge that you're experiencing, by all means, put it in the chat. We'd love to hear what else is on uh, your minds, what's keeping you awake at night. Uh, but I would say across the board, we need more. We need it personal. Uh, we have less time. We have fewer resources to do it. So how can we possibly uh, do this to scale in the future, Go. Yeah, and I think one of those one of those things is if you don't interact, or if you don't have any of those four challenges, I'd love to hear that too and, and what you're sure. doing. Share here are some of your secret sauce. Uh, I think you know we, we, there's plenty to go around, um, and so so yeah. On that same vein, I think as you know, I, I agree with you 100. You know, it's not always about more content; it's about more of the right content and the right content at the right time via the right communication channel, which is a lot of rights to get right, right? And so the, I'm trying to have the captioning say right as many times as possible. That's what I'm trying right? to do right now. So right. <laughs> so the so when we think about you know this the 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 evolution of recruitment tactics. One of the things that I, you know, I think we all understand is that in higher ed and enrollment marketing, we're not, we're, we, we don't necessarily ever retire a lot of things, right? Sure, we don't have MySpace pages anymore. And if you'd still do, put, put the link in the chat. But there are some things that we just, we, we just continue to do even when we add new things, right? And so, you know, sending out mailers didn't replace in-person visits and in-person experiences. Doing advertising didn't replace sending out mailers. Sending text messages didn't replace emails, right? We, we find ways to incorporate new tactics into our fold as we identify them as effective. And I think one of the things that's happened over the past year and a half is what was happening, what was going to happen over a 10-year process happened over a 10-month process with incorporating things like webcasting, streaming, live chat tools, 
into these experiences. And as we exit the pandemic, what we're going to see is a more hybrid approach to our recruitment processes. We're not going to, you know, pre-pandemic, it was, well, you know, virtual events aren't going to replace an in-person experience. And no one is going to argue that. I think, and, and I think we've seen over time that virtual insert whatever here doesn't replace the in-person insert whatever here, right? It's, it's all about creating content and creating experiences that supplement and support each other. You know, having the right amount of storytelling, having the right amount of resources, you know, at, at the right time for students, again, via the right channels. And so I think, you know, we're, we're not, we never really do away with things per se. We always find ways to fold them in. And I think the pressure is going to be in the future. How do we do that the right way? Totally agree. Um, I would imagine very similarly to the conversations that we're having, you're hearing a lot of, we need to do everything that we were doing in 2019. And we need to do everything that we were doing in 2020. And we need to do yep. it better in 2021 and beyond, because we're all reading the, reading the witchy data. We all understand the demographics that we're up against. Uh, so I love this slide because I don't necessarily think it's a it's an or, it's an and. Uh, we don't choose to stop doing things. We choose to do things in combination with others. Uh, what I would encourage all of the individuals that are joining us today is to have conversations surrounding how can we figure out the right recipe. Uh, if you think about baking a cake, there's all sorts of things that are critically important regardless of what style or what you're building. In this case, what we would encourage everybody to do is think about how you can leverage print mail, direct mail, campus visits, college fairs, all of that in conjunction with each other, how better to do that than by measuring the actual interventions, those engagements with students. So uh, there's a lot of buzzwords that I think in some ways are intimidating to higher ed, uh, the ability to really fold in things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, marketing automation, behavioral analytics. We hear those words out in the world. How do we apply them? How do we figure out how behavioral analytics can inform our traditional marketing tactics? So uh, we've got plenty of data, and I'm sure you do as well, surrounding the effectiveness of individual interventions at just the right time. So uh, what I think is really important and a key in this moment is not necessarily to sunset or to retire a specific tactic, but to think about the purpose of that tactic and to measure whether or not the conversion of those students and their families is helping you reach your long-term enrollment goal. Uh, when we were all sidelined by the pandemic, I love getting direct mail. Uh, I think that there's a great purpose for direct mail. I'm never going to be away from my phone, so I've got to be digitally targeted as well. As well. So um, I think the real challenge for our partners and our prospective partners in the future is going to be, how do we do all of this, do it to scale, do it well, um, and innovate? every single year to make sure that we're really in the right place. So um, I think the power of the relationship between conduit and engage gives us the ability to say, if students want to experience you from a distance, fantastic. You should make that content available in real time where they are. Let's make sure we're measuring it. Uh, let's make sure that we're triggering it when necessary and really making sure that it is unique to the individual student journey. Yeah, and I, I like how you snuck innovate into that when you, you mentioned the title of the movie. That's a win. Good job. Yes. <laughs> the other, so the other, you know, I, I love all those points, and I agree a hundred percent. I feel like one of the things that we've always heard over the past, we'll say, eight years prior to the past year, is well, we can't do, we can't add X, Y, and Z because our budget is spent on travel, it's spent on the print pieces, it's spent on these sorts of things, and so over the past year, we've had to do a lot of those things that we were always, always skeptical of or had to have 10 case studies for or had to have data on to be able to do. And so my challenge to everyone would be is as we exit the pandemic, let's look at those legacy tactics with that same lens of needing to evaluate the outcomes and, and look at how they actually support our outcomes. Because the reality is, is most of us don't miss college fairs per se. We miss going to the college fair talking to our friends on either side about how bad the college fair is, right? And so we miss interpersonal connections in a lot of spaces. That's not to say all college fairs are bad. It's that you have the data to be able to determine which college fairs are good, right? And so I think we being more thoughtful about that approach, does that mean maybe some of us have less hotel points at the end of the recruitment cycle? Maybe, but it makes those in-person experiences that much more impactful for our audiences, right? And so I think one of the, as we kind of shift back, um, you know, into the, into that, in that mindset, I mean, you mentioned earlier that students are consumers too. I think what we need to think about is how students use consumer tools, consume media, 
and the tools that we can use to better engage our, our audience and better analyze that data, right? And so we mentioned before about you know, you know Zillow and Amazon as ways that, stu that, that we use tools to evaluate and buy products. Students use tools to evaluate and choose schools. There are tools out there like Plexus or Niche or CapEx that allow students to find, shop, and compare these institutions side by side. I worked in that space for 10 years, right? There, there's, a, there's a lot of opportunities for this that process to be democratized and make it a, a lot more accessible for students to be able to compare and, and shop for schools that way, right? And you know, to the on the on the consumption side, you know, like we use we use uh, we we use Disney Plus or, or Hulu to consume content. Students consume college content using platforms like Zoom and WebEx for meetings, and Conduit for on-demand content and streaming and live events. And, and on top of this, you know, there's the the machine learning and analytics side. Of course, CRM platforms like Salesforce and Slate and others are going to provide that opportunity for automating of reporting and, and generating of reports and, and engagement and, and communications, but you need additional resources like the behavioral intelligence platform and the engage module of capture to be able to support that continuous engagement and the use of the content and the analysis of the impact of that content. And Anne, I know you have a lot of thoughts on the, on the combination of the, of the capture and the conduit piece here. Sure. I think that the the challenge that we're all going to face, and again, a conversation we have all the time is, my goodness, look at all of these different places where we're driving students and their families. We're driving individuals to research us and learn about us, and then we're encouraging them to experience content, and we need to figure out a way to centralize all of this data and make it meaningful. Uh, I was on campus for the first time uh, in a year and a half with a partner yesterday, and one of the most meaningful questions that I heard in the entire conversation was, how are we using this data to adjust strategy? So not just what are we doing and what are we seeing, but as we are seeing the results come in from these experiences, where students and their families are researching about our institutions, how they're experiencing our content, whether it's through Conduit or Zoom, and then what we're doing with that data and the way that we are then furthering our personal communications. I just, I, I although that question sounds rather obvious, I think it's a really brave thing to ask yourselves. What are we doing with all of this rich data now that we have it? Because if we're not doing anything with it, you know, I think about the conversation we just had with Jacksonville, uh, it's got to be actionable. It's got to be meaningful. Students and their families and their influencers are telling us exactly what they need from us. We just might not have the mechanisms in place to be able to socially hear them or to listen to that behavior. So um, as students and their families are communicating with you what they're interested in, equally as important, what they're not interested in, sometimes a non-response is in fact a very obvious response. Uh, we need to adjust. We need to stop doing something that's not working. So when I look at the relationships um, and when I look at these consumer media and consumption tools and how they're feeding platforms like the behavioral intelligence platform through Capture, Slate, Salesforce, all of these fantastically dynamic tools, let's make sure we're asking ourselves, is it working? Are we driving results? Are we able to actually say, as a function of that, we enrolled more? If so, let's do more of it. If not, let's be brave enough to say, let's change, let's adjust, let's try something different. So um, I just love the way that these tools are able to play together uh, in our relationships. And uh, I think the story that the data will continue to tell us is gonna be uh, monumental. Yeah, absolutely. I wanna be cognizant uh, of the time for us, Gil. I know that we've only got about 15 more minutes and we tried oh, really for sure. hard. We'll get, we'll get there or Heather will get the hook either way. So, uh, you know, as, as we've gone through the past year and a half, I think what, what's happened is a spectrum has emerged when it comes specifically to virtual engagement or online engagement, right? And that is that, you know, on one end of the spectrum, we have, you know, the, the pre-produced content. These are our virtual tours, our virtual view books. A lot of these existed pre-pandemic. They're very on the shelf. They're set it and forget it. And that's easy for us, right? Like, you know, from a, from a process perspective, once it's up, it's there, it's accessible. Great. Check out our virtual tour. The unfortunate part about that is there's research that shows that virtual tours don't really move the needle from an enrollment plan alone, right? There, are, there needs to be more engagement. There needs to be more uh, facilitation of content that becomes more personalized, right? And so what's the other end of the spectrum from this? It's being live all the time, right? And this is where everyone hops to Zoom meetings back to back for high school visits or WebEx or using Slate Share or those sorts of pieces. And this live all the time element is something that we thought that students wanted. And what we learned, especially with things like virtual college fairs and back-to-back -back school visits on Zoom, is that 
not all the time, right? They're, they're, and again, it's just like a regular high school visit, just like a college fair. Maybe there's moments of brilliance where you have great engagement, but it's kind of like when I go golfing, right? I have one shot that's good for each type of a shot. But other than that, it's, I'm not really that good at golf, right? And so there's, there's that, uh, that aspect of this, uh, of this element, but golf is still a lot more fun, well, but that's a whole other story. So where, what this means is that there's, there's w- this wide spectrum in the middle that is you know, a need for a combination of live, pre-recorded and on-demand content. Now, of course we have the Conduit logo up there because Conduit does support the facilitation of all these things. But more importantly, it's the strategy around when do we want to be live? When do we want to release pre-recorded content? And when do we want to have just on-demand content that we're pushing our student audience to on a regular basis? And if we go back to the examples of you know, the, the, the legacy media and those, those sorts of pieces, I think when, you know, when we ca- talk about media consumption and that evolution, our virtual tours and virtual view books, those are the, the primary focus on a lot of those is physical locations, right? It's it's showcasing buildings, it's showcasing, you know, facilities and those sorts of things. Again, necessary for a certain point in time, but this is like going to something for, you know, the VHS tape or the DVD. We don't necessarily have that as our, our standard way of engaging content anymore, right? It's it might we might have a library somewhere that we point to, but it's not the big focus of what we do. So when we think about the, the the live content, this is really thinking about our, our Zoom meetings and our, and our WebEx meetings as our live broadcast television, right? We have CBS, NBC, Fox, et cetera. But the reality is, is even with these individual live television stations, there's always an on-demand element after this or the expectation of the on-demand element after this. And so having these experiences without an on-demand element afterwards is a big hole in the way that our students expect to be engaged and expect to utilize content. So what we you know, would recommend is thinking about how do you build your own robust branded on-demand library with a steady stream of fresh releases? That's the Disney Plus or the Hulu effect, right? Hulu is, you know, you have live television the day before and then it's a, there's some of it available on, on demand the next day. But there's also a robust library of on-demand content. Disney Plus, they parse out new content. What am I going to do immediately after this webcast? I'm going to turn on Disney Plus because I know that Loki came out at three o'clock this morning and I want to watch it today. How do I know this? I got the email from Disney Plus reminding me that it's new, right? And so Disney Plus doesn't care if or doesn't care when I watch these shows. They care that I watch these shows. And so we have to rethink our engagement plans of around not just virtual events because events are moments in time. We have to think about events as really those those all of those different interactions. Every presentation a student watches, every link that they click on our site, every document that they download is an event that we should be looking at and measuring as a part of our process. And that's where the, the opportunity to support and, and connect the, the, the conduit platform with Engage allows for that type of, that, that type of analytics to happen. Um, so you know, a couple examples of these, my team loves to make fun of me when I, when I use these examples, but from that content release perspective, think about it as you, know, you, get the, you get those emails on your phone every day from Netflix, from HBO Max, from Disney Plus, new now, watch the trailer, watch on demand, check out these, these programs. And when you click it and it brings you to the HBO Max branded environment where you're consuming content, you can create this same type of an experience as an institution. Does your, do your search email say, learn more and go to an RFI form? Or do they say, watch now and go to a branded environment where students can engage with content and use that engage like Disney will do or like, Net, like Netflix will do to personalize the experience and personalize the follow-up. How do we create those types of experiences to support our, to, to support our students better through this process. So it's it's no longer a admissions marketing campaign. It's an enrollment marketing and a, and a and a content marketing campaign. And so that's that's how we have to rethink the way we're going to use virtual content in the future. Virtual events are a type of virtual content, just like an on-demand video is, just like a pre-recorded video is. So, and I'm going to kick it to you because I know you've got a couple of great examples to share of this already in action. Yeah, let's talk about a couple of partners. Uh, so if you want to, let's go ahead and click through here. Um, I'll, just, I'll talk a little bit about what folks are seeing. Top right hand corner. Uh, this is a lot of what we typically exchange with partners that utilize not only Engage, but Conduit are able to bring into their CRM today. The date that they visited, uh, the application decile for capture is the likelihood of this student to apply to the institution. Number of web visits, number of page views, affinity index for those that aren't familiar, 
that's life cycle score. How much time has this particular student spent engaging with content since we've been able to track this particular student? Uh, excuse me, that's the affinity index. Engagement score, recent history. So what you're looking at here and why this is all relevant is not only are we able to share with institutions what this student was doing on the front end when they were considered what Capture would call anonymous. Maybe the student is a non-responder to your search campaign. They're truly stealth or there's somebody who is just certainly not responding to your content. Capture's still able to help you understand through Engage what that student is doing and what they're looking at. Uh, we were able to actually identify this particular student because they filled out a PID form, that progressive identification form. But where we're able to really tie the power of engaging Conduit is because of our relationship with Conduit, the marriage of those two tokens and the Engage Enabled links, we're able to watch this student as they're experiencing Conduit content in their channel. From there, we can then bring that data back into Engage and trigger dynamic content as a function of knowing what this student has experienced. Uh, Gail, I know you'd like to talk a little bit about the bookends, what's happening on either side. Uh, actually, let's go to the next vignette and we'll talk a little bit about this particular student and then you can fold in a little bit about the before and after. Sure. Uh, again, this particular student I think is very, very interesting uh, because they have an international presence. So we're able to not only help our institutions understand domestically what are students and their influencers looking at, but as you have individuals that are coming to your website as a function of digital advertising or any of the other channels in which you're communicating, we can help students navigate this process. In this case, Conduit is really sandwiched in between the power of Engage to communicate with the student anonymously when we didn't know them in March of 2021, and now in a place in May in which we know exactly who they are. Uh, Gil, do you want to talk a little bit about that Conduit experience that happened in between that gave us the power to identify? Yeah, I think that's that's one of the most powerful elements here, right, is that is on the, on the left-hand side, you see that all of this activity is is tailored based on amazing things like IP address, great. We know they're, they're an international student. Let's serve them specific content that we know they're going to need just in time, right? But the the real power here is that once they attend an event on Conduit or consume Conduit content on the Conduit platform, now we've identified that prospect and all of that anonymous activity that happened prior and all of the activity that they do after is unified in a single record, right? And so we can be a much more predictive and much more prescriptive with the outreach that we're that we're doing because we can now collect and 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 have all that data analyzed throughout the process. So when we talk about their affinity index, when we talk about their engagement score, conduit's a highly predictive element on 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 the, the likelihood of, a, of, a, of applying and the likelihood of enrolling because the students who are engaging with that content are engaging in, in, a, in a really a rich media setting and looking for information that's tailored specifically for them. Um, so I think that the opportunity here is to say, you know, if you could look at the the full engagement life cycle with a student and not just what happened after you identified them on their application, this is a way to, to, to do that and make sure that you're doing it for a greater percentage of your class. Agreed. Um, I know we've got one more here that I think is pretty important to make sure that we talk about outcomes. Uh, obviously, everybody joined us today because we're interested in knowing whether or not some of these interventions are driving students to enroll. I love this particular example because what we're able to display here is that not only does Engage through dynamic content encourage this student to tell us who they are by serving that PID form. We have that just in time. I heard this again with another, uh, actually, uh, platform queue and conduit partner, the notion of just-in-time content, uh, recognizing that five different elements uh, of this person's behavior drove the type of content they were seeing on screen. What I love about this admitted student event and the conduit moment here in February is that if we think about the question that was asked in my client meeting yesterday, what are we learning? How are we using this data? What we're able to display here and when folks ask, did this conduit event move the needle? Did this student actually do what we asked them to as a function of their experience? We're able to help this institution understand that as a function of experiencing this admitted student event, the student went on to deposit. 
Not only did they go on to deposit, but they went on to visit the site 13 more times and see 80 different pages. I know that sounds really, really granular and it will get really granular. That's the power of this robust data. The glory and the beautiful moment of the managed service from Capture is that we helped make this data actionable. So did we get the response that we were looking for and that the student experienced content, learned more about being an admitted student on this campus and then went on to deposit and enroll? These are the types of experiences that we want to be able to replicate and do to scale. Uh, and the relationship between Engage and Conduit has created a situation in which we don't have to lose that student. They don't fall through the cracks, spending time on our website and then going out to consume additional content. We're able to really show that entire journey, that student decision journey for our partners in real time so that they can learn from it uh, and do more of these types of interventions in the future. Uh, that notion to your slide earlier of traditional legacy tactics, they certainly haven't gone away. Uh, it's just a matter of timing and our relationship gives institutions the ability to measure timing more so yeah, than anything. And, so, and, and, and we've got, and we've had, and we've shared uh, examples of this in the past as well, you know, using, using the affinity index to determine who gets the print piece, promoting a virtual event, right? Those are, that's the type of actionable insight that you get uh, from, from this, or, you know, being able to see what students attended a financial aid session that then completed their FAFSA the next week, right? And so there, this is the type of, of, of insight that you get when you can com compare, when you can combine these two things together, right? And so I know we, we, we wanna leave some time for some questions, just, you know, we've got our contact information there on the screen. If you work with Platform Q and want to talk about how we incorporate the, the, the Engage platform into your overall plan, please shoot me an email or reach out to your engagement strategist. We're happy to support. And if you're if you're a Capture client and you work with Platform Q and you and you want you want to put in, incorporate the Conduit platform into your plans, and details are there as well. And if you're if you're folks that are attending that don't work with either companies, that's great. Contact either of us. We'll point you in the right direction. We're here to support. We see the power of these platforms working together as a way to really help to enroll more and 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 support students throughout the entire process with continuous engagement. So with that, I will ask Heather to hop back in and start heckling us and let us know what we what, what we, there we they are. next. I gotta tell you, I was so disappointed that you ended on time. I was ready to sing playoff music. You know, it's gonna we do our best. <laughs> Heather, we do we actually have one question for yeah. them. If you wanna if you wanna ask that before Gil and Ann have to hop off. For sure. So we have uh, posted up on the screen, maybe a Greenhorn's question. How do we keep track of student engagement when it happens across various media? For example, how do we get everything into one basket? Gil, I'll take that one. Uh, yep, that's I you. think that, that it, first of all, no question is a Greenhorn question. Uh, technology evolves every single day. So I'm always learning. Uh, and it's a really great question that I'm sure many are asking. The power of Engage gives us the ability to do exactly what you just described, to bring all of that rich interaction across multiple different forms of media into a central place. Uh, we could certainly talk and I'd be happy to share my information so we can talk more about UTM tracking and why that matters. But any area Area in which you're driving prospective students and their families, we would encourage that you have tracking code and you have the ability to measure it in real time in a student profile. So Engage through Capture gives us the ability to do that, whether it's digital advertisement, an email communication, or in this case, our lovely relationship with Conduit surrounding all of the virtual uh, content that's being stored. So it uh, can be a little bit more of a technical deep dive in the event that anybody wants to do that, I'm happy to, uh, but Engage is the exact tool that becomes that basket for you. Yeah, and just to just to add to that, I think one of the elements here is the reason why Platform Q partners with Capture on this integration is because the Conduit platform is one of those places where engagement with your audience happens, right? And if we can make that connection seamless, that helps you to incorporate, did our virtual content work this year? Hard to say when it's a fragmented Zoom session here and a WebEx session here and a Facebook Live and, a, and all these sorts of things. But when you're driving con students to a platform that's integrated from a backend reporting architecture with the Engage platform, you can you can then be more finely attuned into what the outcomes actually are versus just having anonymous traffic everywhere. Awesome. Thank you, Gil. Thank you, Anne, so much. Hey, it was great hearing from you.